the greenhouse thermometers. Let me turn off the fan. The greenhouse thermometers say that it's like 46 degrees at the peak, 33 at the base. There's still frost on the inside here, but I'm gonna remove the covers, see how the plants did. I had temperatures over the weekend that were in the way of negatives. My highs over the weekend were also negative, so it's just sort of the way it is for me here. Um, but I figured I would uncover things, let them get some more sun, uh, and you and I can see how the plants are doing. <laughs> some of this is as I expected, and some of it is, is not. Um, the fact that they look sad right after I uncover them is honestly normal. Um, I don't want to water quite yet uh, because I've still got temperatures below freezing um, and well below zero in some cases uh, for the next, I think, like three days, maybe. Um, so I'm trying to limit my watering to days when it's not going to be below freezing. What I expected is that the taller plants, like my broccolis, would be more impacted by the cold temperatures. It is not freezing itself that makes your plants get mushy and die. It is when they're defrosting, the cell walls of the plants burst. So I deliberately waited until it was warm enough that I could uncover them, could open the greenhouse doors, uh, and I knew that I would have some impact on the plants particularly the taller ones. Some of the things that are root crops, those are going to be fine. Um, a lot of my greens are also going to be fine. Um, even some of them, not all of them, some of them that are going, that I'm going to show you that look really sad, those will probably bounce back in some ways. Um, whatever isn't good, I'll clear out. And I've got seedlings in the basement I can just bring up and put in their place. Here I have my Chinese cabbage. And then my taller broccolis are mostly in this area. It looks like this is the drier part of the bed too. So this needs moisture, um, but not something I can do today because it's still going to be cold. Uh, and then some of those leaves are more damaged than others. What I'm probably going to do is clear out all the damage, reassess what's going on. Um, not something I have time to do today during this video, but I figured it was worth showing you what does and doesn't go well when you have such cold temperatures that over the nighttime, while it's warmer than outside, it's not necessarily warm enough. Having the frost fabric over the top did keep the soil warm enough, which is why I say the taller plants I expected not to do as well, because the soil helps retain some heat. Um, closer to those low, lower level plants, lower lying plants. So this Chinese cabbage, I can probably cut a bunch of his outer leaves off and his center probably still okay. Um, when I actually remove that, we'll find out, but I'll continue showing the rest of the damage. I expect the most of my damage is going to be in this section. These small rutabaga seedlings, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. My alyssum is also fine. Uh, and then these baby seedlings, which I'm pretty sure, yeah, these are red Reuben brussels. They're just growing really slowly. Those are also looking like they're fine. I've got more of that coal family crop here. Uh, these are the same family as those, but the height difference with how close it is to the soil absolutely impacts how the plants do in the frost. And then I did a couple types of tatsoi in this corner. Tatsoi is frost hardy. I deliberately put him near this door because this part of the greenhouse is colder. It's a microclimate. 
the center of my garden beds are warmer. That's just how the greenhouse functions. So knowing that means that because I put those more frost hardy crops by the door here with the frost fabric and they're lower lying to the ground, those performed well, survived the frost just fine. Same thing in the south bed. This oregano is trimmed back. It's not the season for him, but he's dormant. I've still got some live parts of this plant. I've got radish seedlings over there. Those look like they've been just fine. Mizuna is incredibly frost hardy. He looks sad, I think mostly because his neighbors are leaning on him. But in this section, I'm partially surprised by how flat and sad it looks and partially not. This south garden bed is mostly root crops and greenery. And it's that way because this south bed <laughs> gets colder than the north part of the bed, I think because of this reflective insulation I have. This is going to be similar to the broccoli situation where underneath the leaves that don't recover, once I remove those, there's going to be plants that are alive. They're fine. Uh, but I'm gonna have to water in here when it's safe to do so, uh, and not when I'm gonna have negative temperatures outside because while it, the greenhouse is warmer, it's not that warm. Uh, and I'm not heating this with anything except the air circulation. That really just removes like the rough peaks and valleys of the temperature fluctuation. Um, it doesn't completely mean that I'm gonna be growing things in here without any problems, but it works for the things that I'm making it do. I'm slightly surprised the rosemary's alive. Uh, that's that's a zone five item, and I'm I am not zone five. <laughs> Close. Here's my mustard plants, the old Tokyo greens. There's some frost damage at the very tips of the rosemary, but that was touching the frost blanket, so that makes sense. And then I'm guessing underneath a bunch of these flat leaves, I've got surviving radishes and greens. It's just a matter of weeding out the ones that didn't make it. Winter savory though, looking very happy. I kept a log of the temperatures I was seeing in the greenhouse uh, over the weekend. I took a photo um, each morning about 6.30. I think there was one day I missed that. It was a little bit later, but um, I'll put those up on the screen so you can see the trend. It it got cold at the greenhouse. Um, my my feels-like temperature, the lowest of it over the weekend, was negative 48. Uh, that, that's the feels-like. That's not the actual temperature. Um, but I did have a wind chill advisory. I had a blizzard advisory. It was cold, um, but you know, I don't have spiders and snakes that sneak into my house, so that that's a bonus, right? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that's worth living where the air hurts my face, but this is where I am, so I guess so. So that's my update on how the greenhouse did over my polar vortex visit over the weekend. Uh, it got cold. Some of the plants liked it. Some of them didn't. I didn't like it. But here we are. We all made it out on the other side. Uh, and thanks for coming along with me. I'll catch you next time.